everyone and welcome to our very first Paint and Made Easy class. We're going to be painting the candy corn plaques which include all five of the photos that you've seen. The Franken candy corn, the bat candy corn, the boy and girl, and then also the trick or treat candy corn. So let's get started. In the group I have a PDF with a variety of line drawings that you can use and you'll need to print them out. And then once you print them out, what you're going to do is use some tracing paper. And this is basically transparent paper. And you can get it in any size you want, but you're gonna need it big enough for this um, design to fit. And you can use a pencil or a marker. I like to use identi pens. An identi pen is permanent marker, and it does not bleed. Where sharpies and other permanent markers um, state that they are um, permanent, but they're not waterproof. And identi pens are waterproof. And you can see I'm just putting little dashes right here. This is just so I know where the coloring is going to go. And I'm also going to trace on the hair. So all of the elements within the design I am tracing. These little screws I'm going to tra trace off to the side. So once I'm done with that, I'll take the screws and pull them off to the side. And I'm going to make them just a little bit longer. And this is what I will transfer on to the foam core. So now I have a tracing. And so what I can do is laying on the foam core. And what I did is I went to Dollar Tree and for 50 cents I got a giant sheet of foam core and you can make eight of these with just one sheet. If you're going to do the bat, uh, obviously you'll make um, less, but um, it's a, such a fun and in inexpensive project because I'm just using the foam core. And so then, how do I transfer this design onto the foam core? Well, there's something called transfer paper and you can get this at any craft store. But if you don't want to use transfer paper, what I did is I came in here and I took a number two pencil and I just went back and forth over this with the number two pencil until I filled it in really good. So you can either use the transfer paper that you purchase at a craft store or you can use the pencil markings. And I'll use the pencil markings, my homemade graphite. And it does help to tape your um, design into position. And for right now, all I'm going to do is transfer the outside edges and then these little dashes. Because we need to cut this out. And once I get in the main base coat colors, then we'll transfer on the remaining design. But this is what makes decorative painting so easy to do, is we give you the line drawings and you simply transfer them on. So you can see I have now the basic shape of the candy corn and I'm going to cut that out. Now I can use uh, scissors, I can use an X-Acto knife 
or electric scissors. Electric scissors would be the best. I don't have those. So I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife. So I went ahead and I, and I cut this out. You can see it's got some ragged edges, um, which would um, not be very pleasing to, for the finished project. So what we're going to do is we're going to use sanding disc or an emery board. So you can use an emery board or they have sanding disc out there that um, are wonderful. You can sand wood with these. And I'm going to just sand along the outside edges until they're nice and smooth. I also cut out the screws that will go on the side of his head. And um, I've sanded those down. And then I also cut out a nose for him. And I sanded those down. So I'm going to sand this and um, make it all nice and smooth. Once the surface is sanded, what I would like you to do is just take and put one coat of white on the back and that will stop it from warping as we come in and we base coat the front. Now for colors, generally candy corn is white, orange, and yellow. And you can just go ahead and pick out um, bottled acrylics that are these colors or you can always mix. So. Um, I really enjoy the opaque yellow and red and also the blue by Delta Ceram Coat. And so you can always take a little bit of red and mix it into the yellow to make orange. Or you can do what I did and I'm using Orange Flame which is a very bright uh, Halloween type color. Um, and I also use the opaque yellow and then white for the top. I know that right now supplies are very difficult to get, and especially since uh, we're not going to be doing a lot of shading and highlighting, I want you to use colors that you can easily find, and that's why I'm saying is you can either mix an orange with yellow and red, or you can simply find something that you have in your stash that's yellow. But more importantly, don't mix bottled acrylics with tube acrylics because they might be a little bit different. So if you're going to be using the bottled acrylics, which I prefer, stick with that. Or if you're going to be using the tube acrylics, stick with those. So for the for the Franken corn, oh, he's our little Frankenstein candy corn. I want to make some greens and so what I've decided is in the darkest areas I'm going to use festive green and then I'm also going to use citron green and then in the light area rather than just using white I'm going to mix citron green and white together. As we work on the bat I'm going to use purple pizzazz but again you could mix red and blue together to make this, it's more of a red-violet color. Then I'm also going to make a gray and I'm going to use black and white for that. Um, or you could use a dark gray color such as graphite. In the lighter gray areas, I'm going to use morning mist. And once again, you could just take a white and add just a touch of black to it to make this and but then I'd also add just a little bit of purple to it because it does lend itself to the purple side and that's why I chose this color. Again, I don't want you to worry about what colors you're using. If they don't have to be exactly like mine. What's important is that if I use morning mist that you use a light gray color. And if I'm going into a dark gray um, it, such as graphite that you simply use a dark gray color. They don't have to be exactly the same. For painting supplies, I like to use wax paper palette to put my paints on. You can use a foam disposable plate um, to put your plates out. And with when if, if it's foam, it's very easy then to clean up. You can even use a, um, some of the extra foam core sheets that we use to cut the um, surfaces from. So the first color I'm going to work with is citron green and I'm going to mix it with white and I'm mixing equal amounts 
And I'm just putting out two puddles that are approximately the same size. So now what I'm going to do is I can come in and I can mix this with a popsicle stick or I can use a um, plastic palette knife or you can use a metal palette knife. But you can see how using a popsicle stick works just fine to mix your paints. And we're getting a really pretty um, light green. Now as long as you mix your paints and you measure the puddles, you'll get approximately the same color each time. I'm using my old brush and I only load it halfway full because I don't want to have it go all the way up to the ferrule. So when I come in, I lay my brush back a little bit and I'll just make one smooth stroke along the edge And then I'll also come in along the sides. Now while that's drying, we'll go in and we'll put the actual citron green in the bottom. So if you don't have citron green, what you're going to do is take some yellow, this is citron green, if you don't have citron green, what you're going to do is take some yellow and just put a touch of blue into it to make a very yellow green. Now I wanted to show you how to use a sponge brush too. So the first thing I do is I stick it in water and I squeeze all the water out of it. So now there's nothing dripping from it and when I touch it, my hand gets damp, but it's not like a, there's a lake or river in there. And that's all we want, is we want some dampness in there. And so I would load it the same way. And I hold my brush back. I just find I get a more smooth and even application using a brush. But these foam brushes work wonderful. And I wanted to show you that you can put a base coat down with either a foam brush or with a regular um, Teclon brush. So I, we're going to wait for this to dry completely. Can you see how it's shiny? We're not only going to wait for it to stop being shiny, but then what we'll also do is we'll feel it once it, the shine goes down and we'll wait for it to be room temperature. That way you know it's completely dry. You could also dry it with a hair dryer. Do not use a heat setting gun because a heat setting gun would, um, melt, uh, melt, would melt the foam core. But this is going to need a couple coats to make it darker. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got all three colors on here and you can see that as I they built up um, they got a lot darker because that white was not showing through once I put multiple coats down. And so we have a really nice frankencorn going on here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer on the design. So if you remember, we came in and we laid down the tracing paper over the surface. And we can either use our transfer paper or we can use our homemade transfer paper where we use graphite. Then I'm going to take and simply transfer on the lines. I try to eliminate transferring as much as I can. So if I want to eliminate transferring on the stitches, and just do those by hand, that would be a good thing to do. I'm not going to worry about the nose because I have cut out a separate nose. Uh, 
Then I'm going to slide this down and transfer his mouth. Okay, I made a purple pizzazz nose for him. And we're not going to glue that in place. I just want to show you what it's going to do. And then we have to decide what color we're going to make everything. Um, but since I'm giving him a purple nose, I thought maybe I might make his eyelids also that same color. So I'm putting out white. I'm putting out the purple pizzazz. And again, if you wanted to mix the purple, you would simply add red and blue. And because it's a little bit more red-violet, we'd have a little bit more red than we would blue. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to fill in the whites of his eyes. I don't know how much of his his nose is going to cover up. So I'll just bring that around. And we'll do the same thing over here. I know I'm covering up a little bit of where the pupil will go, and that's okay. After this dries, we'll go ahead and put in the pupil. So right now I'm just following that line. Try not to let this grow. I'm going to rinse out my brush really quick and I'm going to come in here and now I'm going to be a little bit more careful. If you want, you could use a smaller brush, you could use a little, you could use a little round brush but I'm going to just fill in his eyelids with the purple pizzazz. And again, a lot of these colors are semi-transparent, so this is probably going to take multiple coats. Make sure that you shake your bottles really well, because that makes a big difference also. And again, it's going to look just a little bit um, dull because of the green showing through. It will need multiple coats. One of the easiest ways to stay within the lines is to take a smaller brush and go around the outside edges first. And then you can come in and fill in the rest. While that's drying, what we'll do is we're going to come in and we're going to make the hair black. Now you could make it, since his nose is going to be purple and his eyelids are going to be purple, you could make his hair purple also. I just wanted to make it black. So what I'm going to do is I'm coming in. I'm using very light pressure. I've got a smaller brush and I'm just outlining the hair. You could also come in and outline it with your exact... Um, you could also come in and you could outline it with your Adenta pen too. And that's a marker. And again, I don't necessarily care for Sharpies, you can use them if you have to, but Sharpies will bleed because they're not waterproof. They're permanent markers once they set up, but an Adenta pen has waterproof, and so I prefer to use an Adenta pen. Now, once I have the hair outlined, it's easy for me to go in with a smaller brush. I load just a small amount into it. I only have half the brush filled with paint. And if I need to, I can apply this twice. 
but we want a nice thin coat. We want it nice and smooth and even. It's important that when you're going in and you're base coating individual items like this, that you don't spend a lot of time in one place and you don't keep going over and over again. Uh, if you notice, I've started at one spot and I'm moving to the opposite side. Now I won't go back over there because if that, as that starts drying up, I could start um, lifting the paint and making some really ugly textures by doing that. So we'll just allow it to dry and I can see there's some areas already I need to touch up. And if that's the case, I'll wait until it's dry and then I'll come in and do it a, do a second coat and make it a little bit more smooth and even at that point. So now that the hair is dry, I'm going to go in and I'm going to make sure that I get up right close to those lines where I missed before. And I'm going to come in. And let's just see, it's the second time I fill this in. It's a lot more smooth and a lot more even. Now, I have a little bit of a ridge, and I left that so that I can show you what I do if I get a ridge, is I take my finger, and I make sure my finger is clean, and I just wipe it away. And that's how you keep your paints nice and smooth and even. The one technique I'm going to teach you is a dry brushing technique, and I have a stencil brush. It's an inexpensive st stencil brush by Dreamweaver. You can get these at um, Dollar Tree. They um, have them there too. And what we're going to do is make sure there's no water in the brush at all. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to tip my brush into this lighter color. Then what I'm doing is I'm coming over to dry paper towel and I pretty much remove almost all of the paint from the brush. So you can see how it's starting to diminish. That was full strength and this is almost hardly any. And then I'm going to just come in and scrub in some little cheeks. These are just highlights so that we know that this is his cheek area. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to put my lines back in where my pupil goes. And I'm not pressing very hard because if you press too hard what will happen is you'll clog your identi pen. And you have to make sure that the paint's completely dry. I use a little bit of thicker line around the outside of the eye. And make sure you pull the lines in a comfortable that's make sure you pull the line that's comfortable for you. So if it feels better to pull it towards you, then pull it towards you. And I'm going to come up and under. And again, the Adenta pen is waterproof in addition to being permanent. And that's why it works so wonderful uh, uh, going over acrylic paint. Now I just left a little bit of a space there. I'll just come in and I'll fill that in with my purple. I'm also going to go around the outside edges of his hair. And that's going to clean those up, especially if 
you had a little bit of uneven lines. We're going to pull some eyebrows. This really gives him personality. Then we're going to come in and we're going to follow our line for his mouth. I'm going to pull the stitch lines. There's one there, one there, and one down here. Then we're going to come in and fill in his pupils with lamp black or whatever black that you have. But because that line is there, what we'll do now is we can pull, we can bring our brush right up to that line. And this will stop these pupils from getting too big as we fill them in. And you'll see, once you fill the pupils in, it's going to look so much cuter. Make sure you don't overfill your brush. Because if you have too much paint in your brush, you're going to have ridges as you um, put, try to put the paint down. There's a saying in paintings, sometimes less is better. I did want to point out as soon as I'm done with the brush, what you need to do is then go in and put it in water and or clean the brush because this paint will dry very quickly in your stencil brush and it will ruin the brush. I wanted to add some glitter to my little Frankencorn's hair. And I'm going to try to coat the, all of the hair. So essentially the Mod Podge I'm applying just like I would a base coat of paint. And then we'll put the black glitter. And the nose, uh, the, on the purple nose, I'm going to coat it with some purple glitter. So I went over it with Mod Podge in the same manner. So we're going to go ahead and glue everything together and I'm going to just use some Aileen's glue. If you um, want to use if you want to use a glue gun you can. When I put the nose in I want to put it tilted just a little bit and up over the eyes a little bit. We'll have the sparkles there. Then I do have his little screws that are going to go into the sides so what I'm going to do, I just broke off a little piece of a toothpick and what I'm doing is I poked a hole into the side and I'm going to poke a hole into the other side about the same place. Hopefully it would be about the same place. Then I'll poke a hole in the bottom of the screws. Then I'll dip one end of the toothpick into the Aileen's glue, push that into place.
Then I'm going to just stick that on right there. Wipe off any excess. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. And there we have our little Frankencorn. I think he's so cute. And we'll let that sit up. So now what you can do is you can cut a ribbon and glue a ribbon onto the back. Or you can just um, have a stand and set up on a stand. Now we're going to move on and do the boy and girl. They are based in the same manner as the friend and corn, but we're going to be using Snow White, Orange Flame, and Opaque Yellow. Now for the cheeks for the boy and girl, I'm taking a color. So I started with Orange Flame, and I'm going into Scarlet so you can see. It's just a little bit darker, so if you were to start with an orange that you'd mixed, you'd add just a little bit of red into it. And again, we want just a slightly redder orange. And now I'm going to make sure that my brush is nice and dry. And I have just a residue of paint in my brush. And this is just going to give us some little rosy cheeks. I'll do the same thing to the girl. I'm not reloading my brush. I'm just using whatever paint's there. It's just an indication of cheeks. Then what I'm going to do with the Scarlet is I'm going to come in and completely fill in her lips with this color. So we'll give her some nice voluptuous lips. And I'll probably have to do this twice. I want to make sure that I've base coated the lips in before I come in and outline them. So now I'm going to outline her Mouth and lips. You want to make sure that this is dry all the way. And so now to add the eyelashes, what I do is I come along and I follow the line of the eye and then I just pull them up. So again, I come along and I'm using ever so light of a touch and I have the heavier et etch in. But because I'm pulling them up, that's how I'm getting them so wispy. Now what I'm going to do is just add some patterning. So I'm just doing a dash and some dots along the outside edges. I'm just going to smooth up my lining just a little bit. My paint was still a little bit wet when I came in. And I'm going to just pull a few texture lines to really make it look like she's puckering a little bit there. And she is going to have a bow up here. So for the bow, we'll just come in if you need to transfer on these designs, you can. But basically it's just like a giant U shape in here.
So what I'm doing is I'm loading my, my little number three round brush with some white. And I don't want to have too much in it. What I'm going to do is just come in and do a little comma stroke. We're going to take the white and we're going to just put an oval. There's just a, it's just a little bit left to the center. And I have a dirty brush and I'm really loading it with this green. And I'm going to just come in and I have very little pressure. Then I put a little bit more pressure down and lift it and bring it up. We're going to come on this side and do the same thing where I have a little pressure. Press down and come up. That's just going to indicate that she has some green eyes. I want to put some patterning on here. And... Um, make it a little bit girly and I decided I wanted to make some polka dots. So what I'm going to do is come in with white and I'm using the back side of my brush. This is a smaller brush. So what I can do is just load the paint in and come down and press down. Now if I want a bigger dot I can swirl it around like that and I want bigger dots. But it's really easy to make polka dots using the back side of your paintbrushes. Put a few down here. make sure you, your fingers don't get in here. So if you're working with children, you might want to have them start at one edge, work down towards the other, and you could even hold it for them so they don't put their fingers in it. Since I'm going to have those polka dots up on the bow, I'm going to put some down here. And we don't want to put too many. It's just a fun little pattern. Now oh, that's really fun. I thought it would be fun to add some glitter to these elements before um, I glue them all together. And you can use loose glitter, or they also have glitter paints that are called Glamour Dust, but again, Use whatever you have in your house. So I'm going to show you how um, easy it is to use the Glamour Dust um, paints. And they don't make much of a mess, which I really like because when you're working with glitter, it can get all over. And so this is Lemon Glamour Dust. I'm going to go over the whole yellow area with this sparkly glamour dust. And you can see I can go right over those polka dots now that they're completely dry. And it's not going to change any of the colors. I'm just going to add some glitter, which will make it a little sparkly. And we'll put some on her nose. And then also on the bow. I also want to add some tone-on-tone -tone texture, so I'm going to just make little circles with the Mod Podge and I'm not sure if you can see this because the Mod Podge is clear and I'm going on top of the white. So essentially I'm making polka dots with, with the Mod, Mod Podge and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put the, the glitter on top of it. And I'm not sure if you can see that but 
it just gives it a little tone on tone sparkle. So with his bow, I'm going to put him off to the side, just like that, and with his nose, I'm going to put it on an angle just a little bit. And then again, I can add a ribbon or um, put him on a stand so we can either hang him or um, set him up. We're going to start the bat, and I've already based him with uh, morning mist, purple pizzazz, and graphite. The eyes were done in the same manner as the other candy corns, and the eyelids are based in with orange flame. So I do a, a, the letter V, and then I'm going to come in and just fill in the top. Then I can come in with my small brush and fill it in. And that may have to be repeated because I did thin the paint a little bit and it's a little bit transparent. And we're making his little teeth. Again, I'm making a letter V. And I'm not pressing very hard. And then I'm coming in, filling in the top, and then filling in his little fangs. And he needs a little bit of blush, but we have to be careful, because if we were to use orange, it would turn brown. Even the scarlet would turn brown, so I've got just a little bit of red that I'm putting out. And my, I have my stencil brush, and it has a little bit of that orange paint in it, so I'm going to really blow this good with the red and come in and really try to work it through into my brush, getting all of that heavy concentration of paint out. So then I'm going to press very lightly when I come over here. And again, this is just giving him an indication of some cheeks, too. Then I'm going to take that white, and just like on the other cheeks, come in and just put a dash. His eyes are not done yet, so we'll let him dry, and then we'll come in and finish up his eyes. Now his wings are base coated the same color as the bottom, and so I'm going to just take and put three dashes, giving it texture. And we're going to do the same thing on this wing. We'll go one, hold that a little bit longer, two, three. And I'm going to have to give his fangs a second coat. Now I'm going to show you another way to add glitter, and I'm going to use the Mod Podge. So what I'm going to do with the Mod Podge is I'm going to just kind of stroke it at the top, and in between where I originally put those three marks, then I have some black glitter. If you don't have black glitter, you could use like a crystal glitter for this, but you have to work quickly. And please note that I have a piece of cardstock underneath, because it's really easy then to dump the glitter back into the container. So see, the glitter will only stick right there, and I didn't want the whole thing to be glitter. I'm going to do the same thing to the other wing. We'll call, also come in on the top of his head, and I'm going to just make the whole top of his head glittery. Again, I'm just coating it with Mod Podge, Mod Podge. Now 
The bat wings are going to go behind him, so I'm going to position them first. If you need to reinforce these in the back, you can always come in and put tape over them. So we've got that in place, and then we're going to put his nose on him. And again, I put his nose at just a little bit of an angle. And that gives him just a little bit of an attitude. So again, if I have to, I will tape, um, I'll add some duct tape to the back of these to make sure that the wings stay. But especially when, if I'm going to be working with children, I don't like using hot glue. On this one, I want to do a text, and I want to add some patterning first. So I've got the orange color that I originally used, and I'm mixing that with approximately equal amounts of white, and it's going to make it a very light orange. And then I'm also going to mix the yellow and white together. So I've taken a bottle cap and a thumbtack, and what I'm going to do is spread this paint out fairly thin. It looks like I'm going to have a little bit of my yellow in there, but that's okay. I'm going to spread it out so it's fairly thin on my palette paper. And again, you can use um, a foam plate if you'd like. And I'm going to make sure that I load this and then it has equal amounts of paint on it. And then I'm going to come around and press down. And I can even use my fingers. And I've already put the lettering on. I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to go right over this with the lettering. Now I want another one right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take some of my tracing paper and put it right there. So I can just have a half circle there. Now we need to let these dry. So I'm going to put my expensive tool off to the side. If you want to wash your bottle cap, you can, so you can use it another time. And I think what I want to do is, for this one that got a little bit thick, I'm going to just use um, a brush with some water in it really quick, because I'm going to wash in these anyway. And I'm just trying to... Add the paint and thin that ring just a little bit. But well, and that's only because I came in a little bit too heavy. Now for the bottom ones, what we're going to do is we're going to take the eraser part, which will be just like a rubber stamp. So I'm going to load it. I'm going to load it and then offload it because I want to make sure that I'm getting the full circle but not too much paint. Well, it's not showing up that much, so maybe we'll just go into full white. Okay, the white should show up pretty good. There we go. And these just make really easy polka dots. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is with this orange color, I am going to take and I'm going to put a whole bunch of water in here and thin it out so that it's really transparent. If you have a little plastic container, container to put this in, that would work well, but your plate or your pellet work, paper will work really well too. So you can see I'm really thinning this out and making it nice and soupy. And a flat brush is simply um, where it's a rectangular shape brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush in here. And again, we have very little paint in the brush. And you're going to think of the letter C. Now I'm going to turn this upside down because otherwise those dots are wet. And I know me, I'm going to put my hand in them. And I'm thinking the letter C. And then I'm going to do a backwards C. A letter C. And then a backwards C. And I'm staying inside. If I don't go all the way to the edge, it's not going to be the end of the world. But this coat, this paint is transparent or semi-transparent. I don't have really thick paint. This is called a wash of color. 
So I'm doing a letter C, and then I'm doing a backwards C. Or you could turn it upside down and just do your letter C's. If it starts to puddle, it means you have too much water in your brush, and you need to blot it on paper towel. This one had a little bit of thick paint too. I'm going to just ignore that. I'm going to put some black out. This is full screen black. And I'm going to do the same technique we did before. So these will be smaller dots. And I'm going to just use the end of my um, painting brush to make these dots. And I dip it into the paint each time. And then my that's are going to be approximately the same size. Okay, we're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back in and we're going to line in the text. If you want to, like I transferred on the design before I did the patterning, you can wait until it's all dry and then transfer it on. Either way will work. So now I'm going to use the thin side of my Adenta pen and we want to make sure that we're going to use something that's waterproof that can easily, and it's permanent, and then it can easily go over the acrylic paints. And I like Adenta pens for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is come along the outside edge of my lettering, and I'm going to very carefully outline it. Now, if you're doing this with a child, you might want to outline the outside edges for them. And then you can always go have them do the inside. Or you might want to do the lettering for them, depending on how old the child is. If you're a little bit older and have a shakier hand, then that's OK, too. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're doing this for fun. And remember, people are going to be looking at this at its distance. They're not going to be looking at this close up. Now, once I'm done with doing the outlining, I'll go into the fat end and to fill it in. And if you wanted to not transfer this on and do things a little bit more neatly, you could always use a, a alphabet stencil and stencil on any words you want. You could have trick or treat, happy fall y'all. There's just so many fun sayings you could add on to these. But I do take my time and just try to Stay within the lines that I have filled in and make them nice and solid now. And now I'm going to just put some of that um, spacing around like I did on some of the other ones where I do a dash and three dots all the way around. Okay, and then I do, you know, if I'm going to be putting this someplace where it might be in the sign light, I, I will put some um, varnish over it. Um, you can just spray it with a coat of matte varnish, but make sure you do that outside for ventilation reasons. And then I'm going to put a bow on it. And so that's why I did move the lettering down just a little bit so that I'll have room for a bow up here. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So I didn't have any thin ribbon, so I just cut my ribbon. It was two inch ribbon, and I cut it to be about an inch thick and made my bow from that. Then I've got a uh, turkey skewer, and since this is foam core, you can poke a hole right in there. And I secured my ribbon with some um, floral wire, and then I can just glue it into position, but it will be nice and secure. Right like that. And so this is what the final project looks like. Once the bow is on, I can just simply um, hang it from the wire that's behind it, um, or add ribbon and behind, or, or add ribbon and glue it behind it, or even set it in a stand. 
Now, one thing I wanted to say about all of these projects is that you can enlarge them and make them large enough for your front door. Since we're working on foam core, you can reduce or enlarge any of them. The only thing is if you're going to put them outside on your, on your front door, your door should not be in full sun and you should use outdoor varnish on it to really protect the surface. Otherwise, you could put them in a wreath. There's just so many other fun things you could do with them. I hope you've really enjoyed this session of Peyton Made Easy, and we look forward to having you in the next one. So until then, may painting always bring you joy.